Okay, glad to be here in Paris. Um, so I'll have too many slides and I'll rush through some of them. I hope that you'll get the, the general picture without too many of the details. So net network coding is an approach for routing communication networks in which one in achieves increased capacity by using some uh, linear algebra, very elegant theory. Uh, the typical example is given in this uh, figure. If you have a, a multicast uh, situation with a source and two targets Y and Z, and the source has two bits that needs to transmit both of them to Y and Z, then in, the, in, in this network, if every node can only send one bit, basically it is impossible to move B1 and B2 to both uh, target uh, vectors as in the right. If you really want both b uh, bits to reach the, the source, the targets, you must send between W and X two different bits. This achieves what is called one and a half uh, rate because it's two, two, two nodes that get three bits in total. However, if instead of just sending bits, you are allowed also to do some combination of the packets that you received, then W will send to X, not B1, not B2, but rather B1 XOR B2, and that will allow both Y and Z to get the two bits. So using this uh, simple XOR operation, you get a better uh, rate. In, in, in the more general, uh, I mean, the, the general approach in, in network coding or linear network coding is that information is represented as a vector of bits, uh, a source sends into the network a, 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 a bunch of vectors, and then every node that receives a set of vectors will take a linear combination of the vectors and will send this linear combination to its neighbors. Eventually, stuff will reach the targets, which, after receiving enough vectors, it will be able to reconstruct the original information. With a little bit more of details, we will be talking about random linear Net, random linear network coding, which is as the previous figure showed, but the coefficients are taken at random from a field. So basically, the source that has some file breaks the, fla, fa, the file into blocks. Each block we think of as a vector over some given field F. And then, for every source uh, vector, it will attach M bits, where M is the number of total vectors in the file, it will attach, a, I have to remember to do it here, so it, it will attach a vector of m coordinates, which at the beginning will be a unit vector, and after all the combinations done in the network, it will become some more general vector of m coordinates of, over the uh, field F. I, I will be denoting the original information by the by V, and for the original vectors, we will have V uh, bar, and for these uh, composed uh, vectors with coding coordinates and information coordinates, I will call them W, and again, if, if I refer to the original Ws, then I will have a bar. Okay, so it's M vectors of uh, dimension N, each one, and over a, a, a field F. Now, intermediate nodes will get sets of vectors, uh, and they will combine them by choosing coefficients, which in this case are taken at random from the field S. The target nodes will wait until they receive enough vectors. The condition that is needed here is that the vectors that uh, come to the target, which will have a U component for the coding uh, coordinates and a V uh, component for the data co uh, coordinates. If the U coordinates, uh, which are the M, first M uh, coordinates, uh, form a set of linearly independent vectors, or in other words, if the matrix that represents these coordinates is invertible, in that case one can prove that the target is able to recover the original information. Now, since the whole thing is done at random, with random uh, scalars, there is a question of what is the probability that eventually targets will get 
enough linear independent vectors so as to recover the original file. And this is a well-studied problem uh, in uh, the network coding literature. In general, what is important for us is that the probability of reconstruction depends, of course, in the graph, and the network, but it doesn't depend on the specific field. It only depends on the size of the field. And in most practical situations, people use uh, fields of size uh, around two to the, I mean, eight-bit uh, fields. And, 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 and that will be enough for most applications. And we will come back to that. Uh, now, if we do this random uh, linear uh, network coding, uh, we have a problem. And the problem is that an attacker that sits, for example, in, 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 uh, in this node, U, can simply receive uh, this vector B2 from S that send the complement of B2. It flips the bit. Now, you can see that it's enough to flip one bit as to get the targets, get different uh, information and wrong information, okay? So a single bit that you, you flip in this uh, 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 setting is enough maybe to basically destroy all information that is being sent in the network. And this is not a theoretical uh, threat. It's, it's a very serious one because it's a trivial attack to mount. Okay, so what do we do? Uh, so we, we want some form of, of authentication. Of course, signing the original file by the, by the source is not enough because end-to-end -end authentication doesn't work here. It, it helps after a target reconstruct the information, it can help the target know that it reconstructed the right information. But if something changed in the way, in the way then just reconstruction will not be possible. So end-to-end -end authentication will not work. What we want is some form of authentication in which uh, we, not only the source will be able to create signatures, but also intermediate nodes that generate linear combinations of valid vectors will also be able to, to, to build signatures, to construct signatures for these vectors. So what, what are the valid vectors? Anything that is in this linear span of the original vectors uh, w bar 1 to W bar M, anything in that linear space is okay because that's exactly what you get from linear combination of the original vectors. This we will call valid vectors and the, idea, the question is how do we, how can we uh, uh, distinguish between vectors that are in the span, in the span and vectors that are not. Uh, ideally, what we want is to have something like this. We want the source to have a pair of public key, secret, secret key public key. It will use the secret key to generate or initially uh, signatures for all the original vectors W bar 1 to W bar M. Then everyone else using the public key will be able to verify signatures, but will also be able to choose a coordinate a some coefficients uh, alpha i, generate a linear combination of valid vectors, and now using the valid signature of the, va of the vector wi and the coefficients, it will be able to generate a signature for that uh, valid vector w. Okay? So from the valid signatures of the vectors, for any linear combination with the public key only, you can generate a signature of that by doing that, you get that invalid vectors will be thrown from the network as soon as they appear. This is a kind of a paradoxical notion of security in the sense that you are allowing people with just having the public key to build uh, signatures on stuff that they didn't see before, but it's a very restricted form of forgeries that you are allowing the, anyone to do. So the natural uh, uh, tool here to use is the so-called homomorphic signatures. Homomorphic signature is a signature which has the property that if you give me the, the signature of W and the signature of W prime, then I can generate myself the signature of the linear combination alpha W plus alpha prime W prime. And the important thing is that that uh, 
signature generation can be done just using the public key if I am given the signatures of the individual vectors. Okay? So uh, a homomorphic signature could have this form that the signature of alpha w plus alpha prime w prime will be the signature of w to the alpha times signature w prime to the alpha prime. So that would be an example of a homomorphic signature that we would like to build uh, and will help in, in this case. So far, before our work, uh, all the signatures that were of this type that were used uh, to solve the network coding authentication problem were based on bilinear maps. And this, of course, has a problem of, of uh, performance cost. Uh, and also, notice that to use uh, we will be use, we will working over la large fields, not 8-bit fields. Before, in network coding, you use 8-bit uh, fields, which means that the, the, the overhead of uh, coding coordinates is m times 8, while in these solutions, the, the overhead will be 160 times m. So it's a 20 fault cost for the overhead of uh, coding. Now, uh, the, the question we ask is whether we can use RSA for, uh, for these signatures. And it sounds like it's the natural thing to do because uh, RSA has these uh, nice homomorphic properties. That most of the time, they are not nice. They are, create problems. You have to break the, the algebraic uh, properties. But in this case, we can really use them in our favor. Uh, so this is a natural idea. It was tried in, uh, in a couple of previous papers, uh, and it was done wrong. Uh, actually, there's this Infocom paper that is cited a lot, but they, they, that they even the basic arithmetic doesn't work there. Uh, so it's very secure because the signature never verifies. So you are never going to accept a good, uh, an invalid vector as valid, neither a valid vector as valid. So it's security after all. Anyway, so we are going to use RSA, and th there are really some uh, technical issues here we need to solve. So let me give you an idea of uh, what is done here. Really, I, I will skip many details, and I will cheat. But uh, this should give the general idea. So the, the basic signature, the B is for big, basic, the basic signature here is to take a, really to use the homomorphic properties of the multiplicative property of RSA. So what we are going to do, we need to apply a signature on a vector. So first we will apply a hash function on the vector, this exponential hash function in which working over uh, the quadratic residues uh, group modulo an RSA prime, uh, by choosing the, the prime, the analysis uh, modulus, by choosing the modulus as a, as a uh, product of two safe primes, we know that the uh, quadratic residues group is cyclic, so we will have a set of generators, and we will apply this hash function, well-known hash function, that on a vector of V1 to Vn, uh, the hash function will be the product of the Gi to the Vi, and after applying this hash function, we'll apply RSA. And the good thing about this is that since uh, the hash takes us from an additive uh, group to a multiplicative group, and then RSA keeps us in the multiplicative group, overall we have this property. That for any two vectors, V and V prime, the, the signature of the addition equals the product of the signatures. And if you do this uh, with a linear combination, uh, under some uh, coefficients alpha i's, then you get the alpha i's in the exponent. So this is nice and simple, except that there is one problem. This, this uh, equation, this equality, is true on, only when v plus v prime, this addition, is done modulo phi prime of n. Here, phi prime of n is the, the order of the quadratic residues group, which is phi of n over 4. And the reason is because since the vi's work in exponents of g, they have to work modulo the order of these generators. But now we have a problem because it means that we have to run 
network coding where the operations are done modulo 5 prime of n. You cannot work over a, a, a field. But what is even worse is that you cannot publish 5 prime of n because if you publish that, you, you give the factorization of, 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 the, of n. So the solution as in other instances uh, similar to this is uh, basically to work with, instead of doing the addition modulo of 5 prime of n, we will be the, we'll do the addition over the integers. We will never uh, do any modular reduction at the side on, on the linear combinations of the vectors. We do all, everything over the integers. And in that case, this uh, equation, uh, where this is over uh, z, this equation will work. Okay, so that's fine. We can work over the integers. But that means that now we have to do all the network coding. Instead of doing uh, linear combinations over fields, we will do them over the integers. And now the question is whether network coding over the integers works. We know that it works over fields. What is the situation? Situation if we move into, into integers. Um, so what do we mean by doing a network coding over the integers? The, the, all the vectors will be represented over the integers. The original file will be represented as blocks, each block being an uh, n-dimensional vector over integers. The transmission of the original vectors will be done as before with a prepended set of m coordinates. Originally, these coordinates are unit vectors, so they are in over the integers. But we will keep doing all operations over the integers, so these vectors will always be integers. The intermediate uh, nodes will do the mixing as before, except that now, instead of taking the co uh, coordinates from a field, they will take them from a set of, uh, of uh, integers that we call Q. Uh, and then when targets receive the, 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 the final vectors, they will be able to reconstruct as long as they can do some linear operation as before, this linear algebra, except that the inverse of this uh, uh, matrix that was done before over the field F now will be done over the integers. Okay, so how do we choose this set Q from which we take the coefficients? We want it to be a small set because, I mean, small numbers, because when we do operations over the integers and never do a modular operation, the coordinates of these vectors keep growing. Every hop the, the, you do a linear combination, the coordinates uh, grow. And they grow as uh, proportionally to the size of the coefficient, so you want them to be small. But if you take them to be too small, then you may not have a good probability of having an inverse over the integers. So this, uh, this trade-off is, is solved nicely by this, some, I call it fundamental lemma. It's fundamental because it's the lemma that enables the, this whole work. But as a theorem, it's a very simple, it's an observation, very easy to, to prove. Uh, still very powerful here. And what the, the, the lemma says is that the probability that you will be able to decode over the integers when you use a set of numbers between 0 and q minus 1 where q is a prime is at least, maybe it's, it may be better, but at least as good as the probability of working over a, a field of size q. And what that means is that for most practical purposes, it's enough to use uh, coordinates that are taken from the, uh, a set of integers of eight bits each integer. Okay? So these are small integers. Still, every time that you do a, computation, a, a new linear combination, you increase your uh, coordinates by about eight bits. But even in, in, in a network of, let's say, 25 hops, then uh, we will uh, still be, you know, r remember that in, I, I told you that in existing solutions we work, cryptographic solutions, we work with fields of size 160 bits, 
coordinates, um, which is 20 times 8, it means that here you can go about actually beyond 20, 25, 30 coordinates and still in the, on the average have less overhead than with existing uh, other cryptographic solutions. So, so this is nice. It means that we can work over the integers. Uh, it gives us a good probability of reconstruction and it allows you to, to do an RSA-based solution. What is uh, also interesting is actually by this observation, you can improve all previous schemes by instead of choosing stuff from the beginning, coordinates that are 160 bits uh, long, you can start just choosing also small coordinates and you can show that even previous, uh, previous schemes by using that fundamental lemma uh, are improved very much. Uh, for example, in the scheme of uh, Bonnet, Freeman, uh, Katz and Waters, uh, the, 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 the price of computing a signature at an intermediate node will go, it, it will be 20 times smaller by doing this, just because it's proportional to the length of the coordinates. Okay, the, the full uh, uh, RSA-based network coding signature is a little bit more complicated than what I showed before, but it's very similar. Uh, there are some technical issues that are important because they are also needed for security, for the proof to work. But basically, I, I will not enter the details here. Um, let, I'll, 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 I'll discuss a little bit the, the performance issues here. But the, the most crucial operation in the system is to create a signature on incoming, incoming vectors. That is, when a, a node generates an outgoing uh, vector as the linear combination of incoming vectors, it has to, re to compute a signature for this uh, outgoing vector W, and the way it does it is just by simply taking the signatures of the incoming Wi, multiplying them to the power of the coefficients, and that's it. Now, if each coefficient, uh, coefficient is 8 bit long, and you have uh, 10 incoming vectors, it means that you only will have to do 80 multiplications. This is, this is a very, very efficient operation, and it's important that signature generation will be fast because verification is something that nodes can s decide not to do. Okay? You can, uh, by the way, this whole thing is about denial of service. Uh, it's not, you, you can use a signature, end-to-end -end signature, to check that the, the file that you reconstruct is, is, is authentic. The problem is that the attacker can just uh, prevent you from reconstructing. So uh, verification, you can say, I will skip it. I am too busy now to do a verification. Someone else down the way will do a verification and will throw that vectors. In, in, in all, we have very, very uh, efficient signature generation. The signature verification is the bottleneck here. It computation is about one or twice the num number of uh, multiplication, modular multiplications as the number of bits in the vector. Uh, the one thing that we can do to improve that is that you don't have, if you get 20 vectors, you, you don't have to check 20 vectors. You just do a batch verification. You create a random uh, uh, combination and check just a random combination. If that works, it means that the signature, original signatures were correct with uh, high probability. Also, one can use RSA with smaller um, uh, moduli, like uh, 512 bit, because again, this is against denial of service. An attacker that is willing to spend time breaking a 512 bit RSA has much easier ways to do denial of service in these cases. Um, and also, one good thing about this, uh, about, uh, this solution with RSA is that while previous uh, schemes used hundreds of generators. For example, for a ki four kilobyte uh, block of data, you needed something like 200 uh, generators. Uh, here, we can use just one. Uh, a model of security for these uh, signatures was uh, introduced by this work of uh, 
Bernier, uh, Freeman, uh, Katz, and Waters, and we proved the security uh, in, in that model under the under random oracle and just based on the plain RSA assumption, the hardness of, uh, of inverting for the case of n equals 1, doesn't matter what exactly that means here, but in that case we have a tight reduction. So to summarize, uh, we, we, we see that network coding really is a very elegant and powerful alternative to traditional routing. It increases fault tolerance and capacity, and at the same time gives a completely decentralized approach to routing, since every node just takes everything it gets and does the, the random linear combinations, there is no, uh, there is no need to, uh, um, no, no central authority or anything that needs to um, coordinate the actions of the, the nodes. Also, it's very adaptive to a uh, situation in the, in the network. So if, if there is some node that goes down, the network itself will will resolve this just by having sufficient uh, redundancy in the linear combinations. Uh, pollution attacks, which are these attacks we were talking about, actually are a real threat against these, uh, against these networks. We said that end-to-end -end authentication will not solve the problem. Uh, homomorphic signatures have been uh, uh, suggested before as a solution to this uh, problem. So far, we had solutions based on bilinear uh, uh, groups, which are expensive operations uh, and uh, also incur in very high overhead relative, uh, bandwidth overhead relative to basic network coding. The RSA solution is conceptually simpler. It has some performance advantages. If you, if it, it is still not something that uh, may be practical enough for, uh, for many of the network coding applications that uh, it gets closer to something that we can hope of uh, using. Uh, and the main technical tool here is uh, working, doing network coding over the integers, which in itself is, is an interesting mathematical uh, problem. Uh, and actually there is more to, to be understood, but uh, so far what we have is sufficient at least for this cryptographic use. Uh, we have more, more material in the paper. In particular, we show how to improve on previous uh, schemes and also something that is nice. Uh, we use a, a solution that doesn't use signatures but o o only homomorphic hashing. Again, an approach that was used before, but here the homomorphic hashing is done over uh, composite numbers and it has uh, some very interesting properties including the fact that we can use just a single generator uh, fixed to the number two, which is also very good because of, we do exponentiations to the base two. So overall, uh, it's, an, it's, it's, it's an interesting uh, problem with a somewhat interesting solution. Thank you. So we have time for some questions to Hugo. talking about RSA, we cannot do things. The bilinear maps, so what, what you do, you, you use 8-bit coefficients, and you do the same math before. You don't change anything in the scheme, just 8-bit coefficients. At some point, if you have enough uh, hops, you will go above, above 160 bits, which is your prime, and then you just keep, they will not increase anymore, the, uh, the coordinates. So. Uh, up to 20 first hops, actually uh, the first 40 hops are for free because, uh, well actually no, everything is for free. The first uh, 20 hops you just uh, have a net, net gain. <laughs>